Hello guys, it is me again, it's HorrorFan34, and welcome back to another video, and welcome back to another random movie review. Um, I figured, you know, this is a series of videos of just some random reviews out of thin air, you know, just pick some ones out of a hat, and, you know, things like that, but I figured I'd review this film. I'd probably say it's, a, a, not, not even probably, I will say it's a really underrated comedy, I pro and I would say it's my second favorite Richard Pryor film. Uh, Richard Pryor is a guy who I miss. I miss Richard Pryor a lot. You know, when people think of Richard Pryor, they always think of his collaborations with Gene Wilder and things like that. But I really do enjoy most of his standalone movies where it was just him as the star. And I this is my favorite of his is See No Evil, Hear No Evil with Gene Wilder. I probably say that's th this is my second favorite Richard Pryor film. And that review was going to be on one. Moving. It's part of this double feature with Grease Lightning, but we're talking about Moving. It came out in 1988, uh, directed by Alan Metter, which I think that name sounds familiar. He might have directed something else, I'm, or maybe I'm thinking of a different guy. But uh, Moving was is an underrated comedy. It's an R-rated comedy that I really do enjoy. Um, and the cast in here, you have not only Richard Pryor, but you have Beverly Todd, Dave Thomas, Dana Carvey, Randy Quaid, Ronnie Dangerfield, Stacey Dash, and things like that. But Moving is a, really, like I said, it's a really underrated comedy that I always loved. Um, basically, the, the story is that you have Richard Pryor as a guy named Arlo Pear, who has a he's he he has a wife. His daughter is Stacy Dash, who is in enemy territory among many others. Um, and he also has two sons that are twins. Um, and basically, Richard Pryor gets fired from his job because they live in New Jersey. And this guy calls him up, and it's Dave Thomas, who's his new boss, and who you know becomes his new boss and offers him a brand new job. But the thing is, and Richard Pryor says, yeah, I'll take the job, but the, the job is all the way in Idaho. So basically, Richard Pryor and his family have to move from New Jersey to Idaho. And they don't want to do it at first, but, you know, for they do it for him because he, he, he got a brand new job and things like that. So they are going to move from New Jersey to Idaho and all the crap that happens to him, all the chaos that happens and things like that. Um, like, he goes through a lot of stuff, you know, with the, the, the movers who are these criminal guys. One of them is actually King Kong Bundy. May he rest in peace, King Kong Bundy. Um, there's a point in the film where Richard Pryor, you know, flips out on these guys because they're, they, they they're, they're not returning his furniture during the move when they get to the new house. And he's like, I want my furniture! And just the, the way Richard Pryor says it is really, really funny. Um... And, but the, the guys like skip skip town. They're in Mardi Gras. They want to take the furniture away because they're you know they're criminals and they want to give it back and things like that. So Richard, that, that plays into the finale a little bit. But Richard Pryor as the lead, I really do enjoy him in this. Um, this was around the time Richard Pryor. You can tell by like the way his face looks. Um, this is around the time Richard Pryor found out he had MS, which is sad because that's what. Richard Pryor ended up passing away from was MS, which is too bad and it's really sad, but uh, Richard Pryor does a great job in this. Uh, I think Beverly Todd does a fine job as his wife. Stacy Dash does fine as his daughter. Uh, Randy Quaid plays a jerk-off neighbor who has this really big lawnmower and things like that. Uh, Dave Thomas, who plays Richard Pryor's new boss. I recognize Dave Thomas mainly from an episode of That 70s Show, and if you're a big fan of That 70s Show, uh, the one episode where uh, Fez, Hyde, Kelso, Eric, and Leo are going on a road trip to Canada, and they get pulled over at the border because Fez doesn't have his green card, and then they, they arrest them, and the two guards that are in the, in the station with them, one of them is Dave Thomas, and the other guy was Joe Flaherty, who's, you know, the guy from Happy Gilmore who goes, Jackass! He was also in Detroit Rock City and a lot, among many others. So one of them was Dave Thomas, and 
Uh, I think he does a great job in this, and he plays a little bit of a role in the finale. Uh, Dana Carvey plays a guy who Richard Pryor hires to drive his good car because the family rents an older car to move their furniture and and or move their stuff and things like that. And Richard Pryor hires Dana Carvey to drive his good car while they're taking the road trip. And Dana Carvey seems like the perfect guy. You know, he doesn't drink alcohol. He only drinks lemonade. And there's a point where Richard Pryor is like, thank you. But then later, when him and his wife are looking through a magazine and an advertisement, they find out that Dana Carvey plays a guy who has, like, eight different personalities. He has, like, a multiple personality disorder. And, of course, later in the movie, when they get to the house in Idaho, Dana Carvey returns and the car is all wrecked and things like that. He says, like, oh, I think the Pope did it and, you know, things like that where Dana Carvey's one of his alter egos. And he's, and Richard Pryor, like, he's getting mad, but he doesn't want to, like, make a scene. He's like, he pulls him real close. He's like, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to skip town and get out of here before I put a bullet in every single one of eight of one of you son of a bitches. Like talk about his eight personalities, and Richard Pryor has this teddy bear that Danny Carvey likes, and Danny Carvey's like, "You're squeezing Teddy," and then Richard Pryor goes, "I'll kill him too." Um, so he chases Danny Carvey away. Rodney Dangerfield has a has a role in this as a guy at the bank. Uh, that's a really fun role by Rodney Dangerfield. Um, and, a, and, a, and, of course, the whole finale, when they get to Idaho, um, the, the, the people on the phone, like the, the owner, the original owners of the home, said to Richard Pryor, you know, oh, we're, we're going to take the doors, we're going to take the windows, we're going to take the stairs. And, you know, Richard Pryor doesn't really think anything of it, but when he gets there, the owners actually did take everything. They took the stairs, the doors, and... Um, the, the windows and Richard Pryor just throws the key away and, and, and even in the beginning I'm jumping all over the place but in the beginning when Richard Pryor gets fired from his job he tries to flip off his old boss but he does this instead with his pointer finger he's like I flipped the man the wrong finger I meant to give him this but I gave him the, the wrong finger <laughs> um, and and the, the, the nightmares continue because when they get to the house in Idaho. The neighbor is another Randy Quaid. It's the twin brother of the other Randy Quaid, who also has a big lawn mower. And during the whole finale, you know, Richard Pryor's had enough, and he puts on like in this scene on the back here. If you can see it, but right there, like he's dressed up like that. He's got like the the camouflage on and things like that, and he gives chase to the movers. Um, basically, he gets fired from his job on the first day in Idaho and things like that. He ends up taking the he like he's chasing after the movers and because the movers are not giving his furniture back and the the movers end up crashing into this limo and breaking in half and Dave Thomas is in there and Richard Pryor brings Dave Thomas along for the chase and he manages to save his job pretty much. And the kids on the back of this truck, and the the owner, like the guys on the back of the truck, they're like these like these, these like uh, construction guys, and they're like, we don't want any trouble, Mister. We don't we don't want any trouble, Mister. Because they see he has like guns on him and the camouflage, and like one guy is gonna hand him money, and the other guy has a watch, and he's like, I don't want your money. I want those assholes. Like he's he's pointing at the movers, and then they look over, and the guys go. Oh, those assholes! And then they help out Richard Pryor get to the mover's truck, and he'll, he'll, he gets on top, and, was, and he beats them all down. He beats them up. Even King Kong Bundy. That's a really fun, really fun sequence with Richard Pryor. And Richard Pryor comes back with the movers. He's sitting on top of the truck, and fun, there's another really funny line in the movie where Richard Pryor comes back home with the movers. He finally got the furniture back, and he's like, Honey, I found our shit. This is our shit. I got our shit back. <laughs> um, and even in, in Richard Pryor's, and you know, around the, around this time, you know, he's grown. He's found his backbone, and he's not going to take it anymore. He threatens Randy Quaid, says, "You know, I'm going to put you." 
you're going to put this big son of a bitch back and you're going to buy a regular one at the hardware store. And then Randy Quaid's like, oh yeah? And who's going to make me do it? You? And then the dog that Richard Pryor and the family own who's pretty much been, you know, pretty much been like dead and like not doing anything for most of the movie. He's had enough of the move and starts barking and growling at Randy Quaid and it makes Randy Quaid back off. He's like, oh, you know, I don't want any trouble. And, you know, and Randy Quaid, the, 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 the ending shot is really funny. So in a way, the dog has an arc like it, like Richard Pryor does. And the final shot is hilarious because Randy Quaid says, hey, neighbor, we're going to get along just fine. And he's smiling at him and then Richard Pryor goes... And he flips him the pointer finger like he did in the beginning of the movie, and the movie ends. So, I, I know I gave a lot of the stuff away, but still, go out and check out Moving. It's a really underrated comedy. It's my second favorite Richard Pryor film behind Seen a Weevil, Hearing a Weevil. It's a lot of fun. And I, I'm pretty sure anybody who's moved to a new place can definitely relate to this movie. You know, Richard Pryor does a great job. It was cool to see people like Dana Carvey and Randy Quaid and Dave Thomas, Rodney Dangerfield, and things like that, but Moving is a really underrated comedy. It's a lot of fun, it's really funny, it's R-rated, and just really worth your time. It's easily my one of my personal favorite prior films. So that is pretty much it for my review for Moving. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Alright guys, take care.